Well, hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Tim Snack and I am creating these tutorials to help you get started creating a website in Dreamweaver CS4. So this is part three of this set of tutorials. So we've, we've, we've defined our site in Dreamweaver. So Dreamweaver knows about our project, our local folder, and our remote place. Uh, then we come in and we've started to add pages to our project. The pages I think I'm going to need in my website. And you can see I've got six of them over there. The index plus five other pages. Those are the ones that are going to make up my website. The one called mockup.html. That's the one we're going to use as scratch paper. So it's not really part of that group. I've also got a folder over there with images in it. Just some sample files and a few things that I might use as I start doing my layout. So if you have f f um, images that you want to use on your website or you want to display on a website, you do need to get a copy of them inside that local root folder first. And you don't need Dreamweaver to do that. You just do that out on the desktop or, or wherever. Okay, so um, let's get started uh, with this layout process. Okay, so I've divided this up, uh, this tutorial up into two sections because it takes a little bit longer. Um, so I'm going to double click to open up this mockup.html folder. Or not folder, I'm sorry, to open up this mockup.html uh, page. So you can see that it opens up over here on the left hand side and mine opens up in this split view. So I can see the HTML code up at the top and on the lower hand side or the lower side I can see the design view that's where my it's going to show up so um, as you work I recommend you leave it open like this so you can see the HTML up there as you're working which will give you a way to start learning a little bit more about HTML so we're going to do our layout and I want to keep it pretty simple um, so we're going to use some tables to put our content in uh, to hold our stuff in, in place. So the first thing to do is I want to create a table up here that's going to hold my banner or my header or my title, whatever you want to call it. The table is just going to be a one by one. Uh, so I'm going to go way up to the top to the insert menu. Down that list you can see I can insert table. And when it inserts it asks me, okay, well what kind of table do you want? In this case I just want a table that is one column I'm sorry, one row by one column, and the width, we're just going to use a very common width, 770 pixels, and I don't want a border, I don't want cell padding, and I don't want any cell spacing, because this uh, table is going to hold a graphic, and the graphic is already exactly the same size, exactly the right size, I already I made the graphic 770 pixels. Um, so the reason I chose 770 is the width, because that this width is going to determine determine how wide your entire website is, um, and because I don't really want people to have to scroll sideways to see you know the left and the right side of my website, and 770 is a pretty narrow width. Most people's monitors are larger than this. Most people's monitors are 1,024 pixels across. Um, but it, but there's still plenty of people out there that are using an 800 pixel wide monitor, so I want to make sure that even those folks don't have to scroll sideways. Um, all right, so I'm going to click OK now, and that table drops in. You can kind of see the border there. Oh, you know, let me just blow this up a little bit, so hopefully you can see it a little bit better. So that um, that table goes in. Now it's it, it's really invisible. There's we're seeing it in Dreamweaver, but in actuality, there's if we open it up in a browser, we wouldn't see anything. It's just a container to hold something else. So I want to put a banner in there. So I'm going to go over to my Images folder, and I've already got a banner created that we can use. And this is just a sample banner. In one of the future tutorials, uh, we go through the process of how to create your own simple banner. So you can look forward to that. Um, okay, so there's my banner. It's just called banner sample.jpg. And the way I get it into this table is all I need to do is click on it, drag it over, and drop it inside there. And when I let go of it, it's going to ask me for some alt text so I can just say this is my banner. And click OK. And I'll see the banner um, displayed. Okay, now I've got a graphic that is inside of a table. 
and if I click off of it down here in this white area it'll come unselected if I click on it again it will it will select the image and I can tell because it, those three little handles on the lower right hand side um, show up okay um, the other thing that I want you to be aware of is along the bottom down here is a little trail of HTML tags and you can probably see those and I, I, I can't remember what the official name of that is but I call that the breadcrumb trail because it tells me where my cursor is so let me click in the white again and those will just go back and all you'll see is body if I click on the image see it pops open it shows me an IMG tag which tells me that I have an image selected and when that is selected the properties bar that is sitting right underneath there shows me all the properties of the image so if I needed to change something or make it a link um, I would use this properties bar here to do that also it shows me where what the image is inside of you can see to the left there of the image you can see the TD tag and the TD tag stands for table data but what it means to us is table cell so I know that my image is inside of the table cell because my image is on the right side of that it means it's inside of it and I can click on that TD tag as well and you can see it shows me the, the, the formatting that I can do for that I can click on table row same thing and I can go all the way back and click on table to see the properties of the whole table so this little breadcrumb trail is probably one of the most valuable parts here of Dreamweaver as you get working so you can select different objects instead of, instead of us fishing around out here on the desktop I mean I, in this design view trying to get different objects selected if we want to change their properties I'll just click inside of them and then use this breadcrumb trail to navigate back to select different objects okay, that's my first region that I put in put in my banner and it's inside of a table now I want to put in next a navigation bar I'm going to create a horizontal navigation bar across the top here so I need another table to hold that and I don't want this table to be inside the previous one I want it to be underneath and it'll be, if I do the right thing it'll go, under, it'll go underneath this automatically so I'm just going to click down here in the white area and when I do that I can see the cursor is blinking way over here on the left I mean on the right hand side and that means that that cursor is not inside of the previous table exactly where I want it and I'm going to do insert again insert another table and in this case uh, I want all the same properties except because this table is going to be holding some text then I need to I, I probably want a little bit of padding so I'm going to put say three pixels of padding in that will make it so there's a little breathing room uh, around the text so it's not flush up against any borders just make it a little easier to use or easier to read so I'm click OK it drops that table in uh, you can see it possibly sh um, showing up there uh, so I've got this table now I've got two tables stacked on top of each other the top table has this graphic in it the next table um, is where I'm going to put my menu and I want to put my menu inside there so I'm going to click inside that cell I can see my cursor and it's a little hard to see on your screen probably but I can see the cursor blinking way on the left hand side so we can tell from that that our, our uh, the default alignment or the default horizontal alignment is to the left so if I started typing my text would show up over on the left but in this case when I make this menu I'd really like it centered inside that table so the way I can get it to center if I go down to the property bar so I look down at the property bar and I can see that the bottom part of this property bar says cell if you're not seeing this lower half, if your property bar is only showing you half as much, then you can toggle that on over here with a little white um, triangle that I can toggle up and down um, that allows me to see that. Now, there you go. You just double click in a gray area. That toggles it up and down as well because sometimes that little thing's not showing up. Okay, so back to this. Click in there. I go to the cell properties, the lower half here, and I look at the first drop down menu. It says horizontal default. That is the horizontal alignment. So I'm just going to say, hey, anything that goes into this cell, I would like it aligned to the center. And when I do that, my cursor jumps out there to the center. And now I'm ready to type the text. So I'm going to put my little menu in here. So I need a link to the home page, put a space in, and then shift backslash. We'll put a little vertical line. Sometimes it's nice to put two vertical lines in there to give a little space between these this menu. Another space, and let's see, I want to link to my calendar page. 
So I'm just putting the text in now, and then I'm going to make him a link, make these links in just a minute. Let's see. I also need uh, links to the parent, uh, parents info. Now the names that I'm typing here do not have to match up to the names of the files that they're going to link um, to. Actually, they can be completely unrelated. Put a couple lines in, uh, another space. Let's see, need a link to, um, let's see, how about the contact page? Oops, sorry, hit the wrong button there. Page. Let's see, what did I leave off? Oh, I, I've got a links page. I'm going to go back and put the links page back here. Okay, let's see. So that looks good. There's my six menu items. So I've got them typed in. I might want to do file save while I'm here. Make sure those changes get saved. Okay, so I've got the menu made. And now I want to link it up. Okay, so what linking means is when somebody comes to my site and they click on that link, I want them to see the index page. So I want to link that text to that document. All right, so. Um, I carefully highlight it because I want to make a change to that object. So I've got the, uh, the word home highlighted. Come down to the properties bar. And if I look across here, I'll see a field called links right there, right in the middle, or just link. It's got a drop down menu. Uh, but what I want to do, I want to point to the file. So right next to it is this little thing called pointer, um, or some people call this a pick whip. So I'm just going to click and drag that. I'm going to see if I can't do this slow enough that the recording will pick it up. And I'm just going to put it right on top of the index because now it's going to make a link from that text to that document. So when my visitor comes and they click on that link, they will get to get a copy of that index. And you can see down here in the link field that wrote the it wrote what the link is. It even turned my text up there blue and put an underline on it. Select the text carefully. Grab that pointer. This is my calendar. So I go to the calendar page. And I'm just going to run through these six quick here. So there's parent info. There's my page. So the reason why I have a whole page for the contact me info is that I might want uh, to be able to put more info there. Like, you know, what are the best times to call me at school? Um, what's the best way to get a hold of me? might even someday create a form that a parent could just fill out right on that page to send me an email instead of having to go to an email program. Okay, so there's my menu and that's pretty much how I want it to look. Uh, so that's the top two regions of my, my table. In the next tutorial we'll talk about putting your main contact table in and content table in and putting a footer in. Okay, so thanks for watching and hopefully you'll check out the next tutorial.